Hi folks, it's Greg at Worldwide Salon Marketing and I've got a fantastic guest for you this morning. Um, one of uh, the most successful salon and spa owners I know, Marnie Kalmeyer. Hi Marnie. Hey Greg, how are you? Hi everyone. Fantastic. Marnie, you've got an interesting story going back oh, 10 or 15 years ago when uh, you had your, your uh, salon um, and it was pretty tough, wasn't it? It was very tough, Greg. It was... Uh pretty tough, suffered every possible thing you could imagine. Cut a long story short, you were really struggling, your, your, your marriage was on the rocks, you are about to lose the house, um, and incredibly, you turned it round in a matter of a year or two, I triple, quadruple the business. Um, how did that work? Um, well, like everybody, really, I guess I, I went into it thinking, well, I'm a good beauty therapist, um, work for myself, open a business, um, and the clients will just somehow miraculously appear, which, yeah, they didn't. So we we found out about the WSM toolkit, um, but of course I was just drowning and trying to, to do day-to-day -day everything, just trying to get through one day at a time, and like, I just didn't have the time. Um, it sat there and collected dust, quite literally, um, and... Yeah, it just got to the point where the marriage was really, really struggling. Um, and, you know, it's hard to admit, especially so publicly, but, yeah, we lost the house. Um, and that was probably the hardest thing I've gone through. Um, and I just got to the point where I just didn't want it to be a total failure. And it was like, well, I've just got this sitting here and I just I got it out and got into it and tried one one little ad and put that out an email. The response I got from that was mind blowing and I suddenly realized, shit, there's actually something in this. Um, yeah, and I just head down, bum up and had quite a few weeks where I literally didn't sleep much, but it was for a, a renewed reason. I, I found this passion and this drive that I didn't know I had. And instead of my long hours and no sleep of stress and worry, it was long hours and no sleep because I was implementing and reading and writing notes. And in my little office at home, I had all these pieces of scribble up on the wall of gonna do this and then sticky notes on that of what I was gonna do with that and how I was gonna do it and when I was gonna do it. And yeah, slowly, slowly but quickly, uh, if that makes sense. Everything, um, we started going from two and a half thousand a month. So that's, you know, really only a few hundred a week. Um, we were barely getting the rent paid and suddenly I was having to hire someone else because I couldn't do all the work because of the promotions being so successful. And it just gradually but very steadily built up and it got to the point where I really needed to have a receptionist because I just couldn't couldn't do it. It was taking me three days to get back to messages with people and that was getting quite frustrating for them. So, yeah. Just to clarify, you're talking about the original uh, Essential Salon Owners Marketing Toolkit that uh, we produced many years ago, full of great advertising and marketing templates and tools and so on. And you implemented those. Now uh, you built you built the salon up, I think, to something like seventeen thousand dollars a week. Yes. Um, sorry. Yep. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So, so that became very very successful. Um, and and just to just to interpose there, you've actually started a a, a new Facebook group for uh, hair and beauty professionals to uh, to join, so you can help them out. Why have you done that? Um, several reasons. I've really, I learned quite the hard way what works, what doesn't work. Um, made some mistakes along the way, but, but really learned what works. And I see, and I've met so many of my colleagues that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that are struggling and just don't know where to start. So I've really enjoyed being able to help them. Um, and I just, I want to be able to help more. And I think there's, there's room for that. What's the group called? Salon Mavens with Marnie Kormeyer. Spell your name so people listening can, can uh, search for it. Uh, it's Marnie, M-A-R-N-I-E and Kormeyer, K-A-L-L-M for Mary, E-Y-E-R. 
So it's called Salon Mavens, M-A-V-E-N-S, with Marnie Colmeyer. Yes. Um, Marnie, you, the story gets even more interesting back when you, you had the business. You built it up and built it up, and then you had an accident. <laughs> yes, we built it up. We outgrew the premises we were in. We had to get a bigger premises with more staff. And not long into that lease, I fell over and broke my right hand, and I'm right-handed, so... That meant I couldn't do anything at all but work on the business. So it, it, it meant that I had time left-handedly and messily, but to get things done um, and to just work on the business even more and grow it even more. And I really, I thought I'd had systems in place already, but it wasn't until I could be in this position of being forced to just look at my business and implemented and made adjustments where needed and so managed to grow it. 17,000 a week was an average week for us. Um, we, pretty good week was anywhere up to 25,000 a week. That's not bad from two, two to two and a half thousand dollars a month. And I was pretty proud of myself, I can say. <laughs> so what, what, as you did that, um, you must have been able to see other salon owners, other hair and beauty professionals struggling. What were you doing that many don't do? I had the same excuses that everybody else had. Um, too busy, husband, family, kids, too tired, staff issues. But I just quite literally had to, <coughs> excuse me, segment that and put that aside and had to focus on the business. Um, and actually putting in the systems. This is how we say this. This is how we answer that question. This is how we take this treatment from step A to step B to step Z. Um, and I really blocked out time in my diary that was my time for doing this email, my time for writing that script, my time for training the staff. This is how you say it. This is how you do it. The time spent in the beginning to do all that really does pay off. And it's very important. And, I, and a lot of owners just don't know where to start. They really don't. And that's hopefully where I can help out. So where do you see the biggest challenges for most owners coming from? Ooh, staff would probably be one of the first ones. Staff, not enough paying clients. Um, and just feeling like they're barely keeping their head above water and just... You, you get yourself that turned into circles. You just don't know the top from the bottom and where to start. So it's a step-by-step -step approach that you take. Yes, it is. Yes. Step-by-step, -step, easy to understand, easy to follow and easy to do when you're flailing and you've got so much on your plate already. In your group, what can you help? What areas can you help? members of that group with? I hope everything. Um, I think client attraction is a very big thing. People struggle with, you know, we're told so many different stories about branding and marketing that it just all becomes too hard. Um, so we really strip that back and, and take it easy and doable. Um, staffing issues, I've been there and I understand and I can empathise and I think because I can be emotionally removed from their business, I think I'll be able to bring a bit of clarity for them. Now, you got your business to the point where it was doing seventeen dollars or $20,000 a week and you sold it, which is a dream that many salon owners have. Yes. How did that come about? That um, it's important to say that I had a manager in place as well, my manager slash receptionist. Um, so she was full time. She was in place and had been for, well, before her, I had another one. Um, but I'd had a manager slash receptionist going for at least two years. Um, so I was actually living in Canada. My salon's in Australia, or was in Australia. Um, so I was actually had moved to Canada at the time. So I was living in another country. My manager was running it, the systems were in place um, and we decided to sell. And I think what made it so sellable, to be honest, was the fact that we had all those systems in place. So a new owner could just walk in, 
this is how we answer the phone. This is, you know, a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, weekly, monthly, fortnightly task. Here's what happens with stock. Here's how we sell product. Here's how we train your staff and so forth. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? Systems. Systems actually make you free. Uh, mm-hmm. You can't possibly imagine the staff at McDonald's going to work every day and trying to figure out how they do things on a daily basis. Yeah. And one thing I fought for years about systems because I was just didn't even know where to start with getting systems in place. Um, so I fought that for a really, really long time as well. Um, but once once I put a couple of systems in place and I could see how that worked, I just kind of stepped it backwards to go, okay, well, where do I, where does it really need to start from? And quite frankly, it starts from the second the key's in the door and you open the door. You've got to have systems in place. So I think that's where a lot of owners struggle as well. I found it very intimidating in the beginning. Now, in terms of marketing, it was marketing that that got your business up to where you had the ability to sell it for a six figure sum. Yes. What's the difference between the marketing you were taught in the early days and the marketing that actually worked for you in the business? Um, well, quite honestly, I wasn't actually taught anything about marketing in the early days. It was, I just knew I wanted to work for myself and have my own business. So the only marketing as such I was exposed to is what the newspaper reps were telling me, the magazine reps, um, and social media wasn't as big, like it was there, but it just wasn't as big at that time. So it was really newspaper magazines. So they all think that you need the Coca-Cola type, Pepsi type branding um, and pretty. And the amount of money I wasted on trying to do that. And I was lucky if I got one call. And I remember the first ad I did from the original toolkit, um, they actually weren't going to run it because they were like, it's just ugly. <laughs> And I'm like, well, unless you're paying for it, this is what we're running. And I had Mondays, the salon was closed and it was in the Monday paper and I had the phone diverted to my mobile because I was desperate. You know, if I just get that one call, I've got to make sure I can answer it. Um, And I think it was something like 53 calls or something. It was just crazy. I just sat there thinking I'd go to the shops and I sat there in the car park just with my diary and my phone answering call after call after call. I sat there for like three hours. (laughs) Um, so I think it's really important to, it, it, as the salon business that we are, we really need to give the customer a reason why they should be choosing us and not the 58 other competitors in the 10 kilometre radius. Um, so it's very important, I believe, the emotional direct response um, segment of it, part of it, that's most important. and. So you've yeah. got to appeal to their emotions rather than, it's not logic, is it? It's all about emotion. And it's all about emotion and what is their problem, irritate that problem and provide the solution to that problem. What's in it for them? That's all clients want to know. It's what's in it for them. That's a remarkable turnaround, isn't it? It is. I'm quite proud of myself for it, to be honest. <laughs> so you... You got the you got the fifty three calls um, off that one that first ad, mm-hmm. and that was a wake up call for you. Massively, massively. For the first time since buying the business, I was booked three weeks ahead, and I'd never had that sort of thing before in the business. And that was a wake up call. So I got all excited, and I tried another one, and then I tried another one. Um, and yeah, so I think too, like not. I, I did more than one at, at a time. So I was appealing to different different services because, you know, in a beauty salon, you've got so many different services. So I was trying to appeal, appeal to, you know, different interested parties, facials, waxing, that sort of thing. Yep, yep. So, uh, folks, uh, if you are struggling in the hair and beauty business or even if you're not struggling, if you're doing really well, um, uh, but... Uh, nobody can work in a vacuum successfully and you want uh, somebody to guide you and give you a bit of tough love um salon mavens with marnie colmire is the place to go on facebook so head over there join the group and uh marnie will no doubt personally welcome you thanks so much hope to see you all there
Thanks, folks, and uh, thanks for listening in on another Rich Salon Owner podcast. <laughs>